Okay, this video is on how to calculate recoil from a rifle. And I'm using a rifle, could be using a handgun, and the same method could be used to adapt to a shotgun if you want it. So I didn't come up with this. Uh, read this article in American Rifleman from uh, some back issues. Anyway, there's five things that you need to know to calculate the, the recoil. Oh, and a rifle. You need to know the weight of the gun in pounds. You need to know the weight of the bullet that the gun's shooting in grains. You need to, you need to know the velocity of the bullet in feet per second. Uh, these these last two you can get off an ammo box if you want. Uh, the weight of the powder charge in grains. You know, if you're shooting factory ammo and you really want to know, I guess you could pull a, pull the bullet, or you can look at a, at a reloading manual and just see. Well, it's about about this or that. You know, just figure out what the what they're likely loading to and then last you need to know the velocity of the powder and that's where the American rifleman comes in uh, with with a uh, constant there you just assume 4,000 feet per second so uh, there's two other constants you need you need uh, to be able to convert from grains to pounds well there's 7,000 7,000 grains in a pound and you need to be able to convert uh, from pounds mass to pounds force, and that's just using gravity, 32.174 feet per second squared. Uh, Two-step process here. First, you find the velocity of the gun. This is through conservation of momentum. You know, what goes out also comes back. And then, once you find the velocity of the gun, then you can calculate the, the recoil energy. So this picture, uh, these these equations look a little scary. They might not show up very well in the video. The um, the top equation is velocity of the gun. It's basically um, mass times velocity equals mass times velocity. So you the bullet exits and the powder exits, and you add up those two, and then you do, uh, and that. So that's what's leaving the gun, and what's coming back is the uh, the gun coming back at you with that weight so you divide by the weight of the gun convert it to grains to get the velocity of the gun and then you use just kinetic energy equals uh, half mass times velocity squared and you convert that to a pounds force using gravity that's the bottom equation and again we're going to use powder velocity is 4,000 pounds so an example uh, just saying a hypothetical eight pound rifle we'll call it a 30-06 uh, 150 grain bullet at 3,000 feet per second and out of the reloading manual it looks like you could expect about a 55 grain charge of powder with that load so 150 grains times 3,000 feet per second that's the the weight of the bullet and the mass of the bullet and you add to that 55 grains times 4,000, the weight of the powder, times our, our velocity for the powder. And you divide that by uh, 8 times 7,000. That's the weight of the rifle converted to grains. And you come up with velocity of the gun at 11.96 feet per second. Uh, next we do uh, convert that to the recoil on the gun. And so basically we take our same rifle weight and we multiply that by velocity of the gun that we just calculated squared and divide that by two times our gravity constant 32.174 so recall from previously our velocity of the gun is 11.96 so we multiply 8 pounds of the rifle times 11.96 times 11.96 and divide that by 2 times 32.174 and we come up with, uh, that's the middle column, 17.8 pounds of recoil. That's our estimated recoil. So this com this is a comparison showing a couple different loads that I worked up just, just using this formula. Um, a 270 with 130 grain bullet, 30 out 6 with 150 grain bullet, 30 out 6 with 180 grain bullet, and then a 301 mag, and I didn't put it in there, but a 180 grain bullet. So uh, this is just to give you a comparison. Um, the 270 and 30-06 I gave a uh, eight-pound rifle, and and the 301 mag I said, well, let's do a nine-pound rifle. So recoil, you can see it steps up. Uh, you go from almost 18 foot-pounds with a 30-06 and 115 grain bullet 
to uh, all 21 and a half with 180 grain bullet. So if you're shooting, uh, you know, if you if your shoulder can tell the difference between those two loads, you know, it's probably real. And then uh, you step that up, you take that 180 grain bullet, and you step it up to 270 velocities in your 300 Winchester, and you're coming in at 24, 25 foot pounds of recoil. So uh, you lighten your rifle. If the, white, if the rifle is lighter, uh, that means you're going to get a he uh, heavier felt recoil because there's the velocity of the rifle coming back at you is going to be that much greater. So uh, you, we'll do a recoil. Talk about recoil reduction. So basically, there's a couple things you can do very quickly to re uh, reduce your recoil. Well, not very quickly to the rifle you own, but very quickly with, you know, uh, if you went out and bought another rifle. So uh, the first would be less powder. This is the, the short mag versus the regular mag, you know, 300 Winchester mag versus 300 Winchester short mag. You get the same velocity, but uh, less powder. So you get a little less recoil, and you can feel that. Uh, in the comparisons, I sh we showed uh, a lighter bullet. You know, you got basically less less uh, mass leaving the, the gun so less powder or a lighter bullet you're gonna have less coming back at you so um, now less momentum transfer my third bullet here uh, that is that's that's code for muzzle brake so uh, momentum transfer is you know what goes straight away from the gun comes back straight at you well if you have a muzzle brake some of those uh, gases from the powder escape to the sides away from you uh, uh, perpendicular to you so you don't actually get hit by that momentum you know the the it's not like a rocket nozzle pushing away from you it's it's a flare going out to the side so you're the the momentum of that gas is not being transferred back through the gun into your shoulder as a recoil and then I guess the last thing you could do is a heavier rifle uh, mercury plugs in the stocks of rifles people do that you can buy those uh, if you read some of Jack O'Connor's older stuff uh, he talks about wanting heavy kicking rifles to be uh, in a he or heavy kicking cartridges to be in a heavy rifle so you know bigger heavier rifle it's gonna be harder to carry around but it won't kick as much uh, uh, and then I guess uh, I, I read once Colonel Townsend Whelan, his rule of thumb was 14 pounds of recoil. Anything under that you could shoot all day at an unmoving target, and anything over that would, would tire you if you're shooting at paper. And he said it you could tolerate more if you were shooting at a moving target, because then you're, like, like if you're out shooting skeet with a shotgun, you're focusing on, the, on hitting the bird, you're not focusing on the rifle hitting you. So, uh, lastly, I have here uh, my 30 out 6 example that we worked. This I set up in Excel. It's pretty easy to set up in Excel. And I'll show you on the next uh, slide. There's the equation. So, if you wanted to go in and figure out how to, how to set this up, there's the equation for you. I like to do this type of thing in Excel because then I can do measurements uh, or I could say well what if I have a seven pound rifle versus a nine pound rifle so anyway I want to thank you for watching and uh, making this right at New Year's so have a have a good New Year's